Hello, hiya, it's Lindsay here um, and I'm back with just a quick video with a tutorial um, on a very um, quick card um, and also just a, an explanation about CAS and CASE. So um, obviously if you've been a card maker for a long time you've probably already heard those um, expressions or seen those um, words before CAS and CASE, C-A-S or C-A-S-E. Um, so I'm, it's just really for people that may have just got into card making or have just recently started crafting. Um, and I thought I'd explain the two and also just pull that into a demo as well. So first thing is CAS, what does it mean? It just stands for clean and simple. So um, it means really a card with little um, or very few or even no embellishments um, and quite a lot of white space. There must be white space. It tends to be it's white space really rather than coloured card and plain, just plain card, it has to be white, okay? Um, but this is an example of a CAS card. So this would be, this is a little um, Christmas card, very, very simple. Um, now, cast cards don't have to be simple, so it says clean and simple. Sometimes they actually take quite a long time to do. I suppose it depends on, on what you're doing. And there's loads and loads of different ways you can do clean and simple cards. Um, normally, I suppose it focuses on one image or a focal kind of image, uh, maybe a sentiment and you can have borders and you can have you know, some embossing uh, like the dry embossing embossing folders and you can have other things on there but in main it's a very it's just a clean and simple card so this is what i would say is a cast card okay it's a clean and simple card it uses a couple of stamps there's a couple of images on there a lot of white space and it's stamped directly just onto the card okay um so you can have layers on um, a cas a clean a quick uh, sorry a clean and simple card but um, like I said, it's just not too many. And I've used here, this is the Caroline My stamp set. So I'll just show you that. That's the stamp set there, okay? That's a host stamp set. So um, you can only get this with Stamping Rewards. And it is, um, the Stamping Rewards start when you place an order of 200 euros or more. Um, that would be like, so either if you're placing a large order of your own or in a group, if you put a group or a group of friends or a group of crafters together, you would get stamping rewards and you can only buy the host sets with stamping rewards or those things like host papers and other a couple of other items as well each catalog always has a couple at the back of host items so this is one of those and it's obviously what it says caroling mice so there's some mice singing christmas carols um so i've used that stamp set and i just created a very quick clean and simple card and I am very, very limited, as I said before, I'm really limited with my supplies at the moment because I don't have all of the things I can buy once I'm a demonstrator and or a, like yourself a customer um, for stamping up. So the um, ink pads that I've got are the ink colours that started in 2020, uh, 2021, sorry, that will last till for last year and next year. And they finish, they'll finish next year then. And these ones, are they've got the soft succulent, so I do have a very soft green in there. There's Evening Evergreen, which is a, a darker, uh, a much darker green, um, a very dark green, really. Uh, fresh Freesia, Pale Papaya, and Polished Pink. And that's all I've got, um, other than that, and a black. So, um, like I said, I'm very limited. So I've chosen to do, um, just stamp the image of the tree. Um, I used the brush, so this is a very old version of the Stampin' Up brushes, um, the new ones are a little bit look a bit different to this, but this is the fine one. Um, so see if I can fo focus on that. It's a fine, fine brush. You can see the tip there at the end. And um, in the old pack, you just got one thicker one and one thick one. I think now in the new ones, you get three, um, three different types of brushes and one with a big flat um, sort of end as well to make uh, background and all kind of watercolor much much easier. Um, but I've just used the fine one here because these stamps are fairly small. And, and all I did was got the ink pads and you give them a push. If you give them a push together like that, when you open them up, some of the ink transfers into the lid. And I've used that just as a palette. You can see there where I've been using it. So I just used my brush um, and there's water in this brush here. And the more sort of you drag it around, so it'll start off, you can have quite a dark colour. You drag it around and it'll water itself down as more water comes out of the brush. Uh, and then when you're finished with that colour and you want to use a different colour, you get a piece of um, scrap or a piece of tissue or something and you wipe against it. Just do that over here. And then as you wipe against it, the green then comes out of the brush there. So um, all I've done is that I've done that on the tree and I've done that on his, um, I've used the uh, 
uh, polished pink, sorry, the cat colour. I've done his little nose and his hat and scarf. And that's it, the rest of the image I've left black and white because I don't have any other colours that really suit, I don't think, on that one. I could have done the dark green on the jacket maybe and I might I might go back and do that. And then I've used, if you can see that, I just free drew with the brush a line across there for the for the baseline. Um, you know, I don't have any blue ink or either like that, so I can't do like that. And I don't have any of the sponge daubers, which would be really nice to give a, a kind of a, a blended effect there. So I just used the water brush to pull across some colour um, and kind of tote, like fade it out then back to white. And I use, if you can see that sparkle there, let's see if I can pull that there. I use the Wink of Stella um, brush, which is this one here. And the Wink of Stella is um, another sort of... Um, brush there very very fine tip and it's got it lasts for ages it's got some you can hear the little balls there to keep the ink nice and loose so you can give it a shake uh, when you use it again but it's a very very it's kind of like a clear liquid it's not very wet it's actually quite a dry sort of medium but it's got like a clear liquid in with sparkle just a shimmering it's a bit like when you, sometimes people used to use some different inks and things to mix in spritzers to make um, a shimmery sort of spray. It's a bit like that, but in a really handy brush. And you can just touch on wherever. You could do some on the tree on there or whatever you wanted. You could do some snowflakes with it or some stars or anything really with that. So it just, it just adds a little tiny bit of sparkle. But that is a cast card, to clean and simple, okay? So um, the other um, set of letters is C-A-S-E, um, which stands for Copy and Share Everything. Now, some people have different... I have a little bit of a different point of view. Some people say it's copy and steal everything. I've seen some people say copy and selectively edit, which I quite like as well. Hi, Ola. You're right. Um, thanks for watching. Um, I've seen people say, um, yeah, copy and selectively edit, which I like that version because a lot of the time you see a card, it gives you inspiration, you like it, and you think, oh, yeah, I can go away and make something like that. Maybe you have a different stamp set or maybe you have different papers, so you kind of make, put a spin on it to make it your own. So... Um, I quite like that, but copy and share everything, um, which is kind of the most known way of, uh, of what that, um, those letters stand for. Basically, it's trying to encourage crafters um, to share and um, be generous, I suppose, in their, in their designs and not get too precious about their own designs. You know, I mean, when you do a card, obviously, this is a very plain fold card, just a standard open and shut card. But you can get gatefold cards, easel cards, waterfall cards, um, trifold cards. Uh, oh God, the list, you could go on and on and on. There's lo loads of different kind of cards, pop-up cards, all the kind of things that you see um, people doing. Um, and nobody really owns any of those. You can't really own a card fold as your own um, fold. You might, you might feel like you've come up with something first and there is every now and again a new fold will come along that everybody likes and starts using. But it's the same with um, other products like your your stamps and your dies. They're they're owned and copyrighted by the company that you buy them from. So obviously in this case, Stampin' have owned the copyright of the designs. If you want to sell your cars, you do need to have the um, copyright stamp from Stampin' Up, which you stamp you can stamp on the back of the card, and that allows you to sell your designs as well. That's their angel policy, and you, um, every company has its own angel policy. It's normally on the bottom of the website. Um, to allow you to see what you need to do in order to to sell your cards commercially to um, to use their designs. But when it comes to crafting and just crafting for fun and for for love and for, for our hobby that we like doing, um, the reason um, I mean I was stamping up started using case casing the cards um, years ago. It appeared in the catalogues and it was a very big thing. And I don't know if they invented it or whether it became from some another company or became from just in the crafting world, really. It just kind of was been around for a long time. But the idea is, instead of trying to say, oh, you know, I own that design and I own this design, you don't actually because you, you're using other people's images and, and papers, you know, patterned papers and, and dyes and things. But also, if you've come up with designs, it's nice to share them because for those crafters who sometimes look for inspiration... It would be very, very difficult if you had to come up with everything from, from a scratch, from a blank. And, you know, if I have to make a card, especially the, it always seems to be the ones you have to make. So if you have to make like a, uh, you know, a sympathy card or you have to make a birthday card and you think, oh, crikey, I forgot about that card. I was meant to have that for tomorrow. And suddenly that's the time and you get a block and you think, oh, my God, I can't think what to do. Well, you know, you might go on Google or Pinterest or Facebook or whatever and search and you might... If you type in, because there's so many um, Stampin' Up! customers and demonstrators around the world, 
um, you've always got a great chance. If you, if you type in, so if I knew I wanted to make a card with this set, if I typed in Stampin' Up Carolyn Mice and then just hit images on the Google search bar, um, loads and loads of images will come up using this set. So that's a great way. Or you can put, um, you could put um, Stampin' Up Sympathy card or Stampin' Up Birthday card and loads and loads of ideas will come up. And then, like I said, you might not have the right stamp set, but you might get an idea for the card that you want to do. And it would be awful to think that new crafters and people that don't have a lot of experience couldn't use other designs um, that they've seen to draw inspiration from without some sort of fear of copyright. This is not, um, you know, card making is a hobby. It's meant to be fun and it's meant to be enjoyable for everybody. And as crafters, we all learn and we all grow from inspiration and taking ideas and things from other people. That's how we all work. It's how all artists work and all, all crafters work, I believe. So the, the theory behind... Um, you know, copy and share everything, was meant to be that everybody shares in their ideas and freely shares in their ideas. They don't try and say, oh, well, I've done this and nobody else can copy this. Um, you know, no one's going to sue you if you do a card that's somebody else. But in saying all of that, copy and sharing everything is great. And most people don't tend to completely replicate and copy a design. You might do. You might see one and think that's what I want to do and absolutely replicate it. Most people tend to do it slightly differently and maybe do a little spin on that. But it is always nice if you're going to post your design on your page or on a crafting group that you're in or wherever, you know, anywhere I kind of publish that on the internet or anything, it is nice to give credit for where you found the, found the inspiration. So if you know that you've been to somebody's blog or you've been to somebody's website and you've seen a card done, then, uh, you know, and then you've thought, oh, well, I'm going to use that idea and I'm going to take inspiration from that. It's nice then if you are going to post that on your site um, or in your crafting page or give you know show your group it's nice to say oh you know I was looking at such and such's website or such and such's blog and this is where I got the idea from um, and that's kind of just courtesy then between crafters so that's kind of how um, CASE or case or copy and share everything works um, and you'll hear the expression you know, I cased this from you know this this crafter and that's what it means I copied and shared ideas from that project so in doing that, I'm going to copy and share my own card. So basically, this was a clean and simple card I made earlier. And I'm now going to do a copy and share and just do a quick another demo using very, very similar things, but sl just slightly change it up. Um, so on this one, I've got the base card again. Um, and this time I have the um, soft succulent, so the, the card stock that matches this colour. I have that card. So I've cut a panel of that card and I've cut another white panel that goes over the top just to give myself, so this is called matting and layering. So just give myself a matte and layer of um, card. So I'm going to pop those down in a minute and I'll fix those down. But you can see it'll just give me that border there. So when I line this up with the card, it gives me that border. Now my lighting isn't great in here because I'm in my kitchen because um, my baby girl is sleeping in the room with my craft light. So <laughs> um, this is just... Um, it is the same colour as the ink and it is a really nice, it's called soft succulent and that's exactly what it is, like a succulent leaf type green, a really soft one. Um, so it works for Christmas designs and also obviously for a lot of nature and it's kind of almost like, it, it's like a colour that's almost towards a pastel, not quite, it's a very a kind of a muted colour. Um, so I would put, I'm going to put these down, but first I'm just going to work on this panel. And the reason I'm not going to stick all these down first and then work on the top is because just in case I make a mistake, you won't want to fix all of this down and then make a mistake on this top piece. So another good reason for putting a panel on rather than working directly onto the card like this, another good reason for putting a panel on, and I could even do it without the soft look, you could even just do white on white. A lot of people do like to do that as well. But it does mean I can work on this panel. And if I make a mistake, I just replace the panel and start doing it on again. And I haven't wasted all of this other card as well. Okay, so I'm going to take this panel and then what I'm going to do is before I just free drew the base there actually I don't think it, it hasn't worked out too bad I stamped the mouse first so he was kind of sat there um but what I'm going to do I'm going to do this card the other way so I'm going to landscape it um landscape orientation and I'm going to take and what I've done is I've got a piece of card here and I used a pair of scissors and I just again I free cut so I don't have any stencils at the moment I don't have any kind of masks or anything that I can do that with but I just took some scissors and drew because I thought I'd pre-draw it rather than just freehand it there. But because these stamps and this stamp set are the red rubber type and that you can't see through them, so when I turn that over, I obviously know roughly where it's going to stamp, but I don't know exactly for the placement of the feet. So really I need to stamp the mouse first because otherwise I run the risk of doing my line 
um, my baseline for the floor and it going over um, the mouse's feet or obviously the mouse hovering above the ground and I don't want that. So um, my black ink that I've got at the moment is just Black Memento. Um, Stampin' Up! also sell this Black Memento. But I am using um, water, the water brush with water-based inks to colour this in. So if I was doing this um, and, I was, and I decided I was going to do this in advance normally, I would use um, a, a Stazon. I would use Stazon black ink because Stazon is a solvent-based ink and won't run with water. So if I was using the solvent-based ink, I could watercolour happily away and know that the lines don't bleed. As it is, I've got to be pretty careful. Um, I'll allow this just to dry for a second or two, but I've also got to be pretty careful when I do do the colouring like here. I just made sure, you probably can't really, yeah, you can probably just see that there. I just kind of kept just within the lines. Um, I didn't kind of try and go over the edges too much in case it did bleed actually um, with that. And then I am going to, so now instead of the tree, like on the other card there, I've decided I'm going to use the other stamp, which is this um, lamp post. That, so it's on, on the stamp set, it's there. So I decided I'm going to use this lamp, this lamp post here instead of the tree on this one. So I'm going to just peel this back in off. And I have I just have a bigger block for this one here because it's not it's not going to fit on the other block there. And in the meantime, I'm also just going to clean my stamp. Um, now I will say this: when you're doing clean and simple cards, probably a good idea is to make sure your hands keep clean. I'm a terrible. I've got a terrible habit of getting my fingers all inky uh, when I'm working. So it's probably quite a good idea. So I'm just going to clean that stamp. It's all nice, nice and clean and dry now. Um, of, of keeping your fingers, if you can, like so I've got ink on that one already, but um, try and keep your fingers ink free because if you make a smudge or a smear on a clean uh, and simple card, you see it much more than you do maybe on another kind of more detailed project and you haven't got as much opportunity to kind of cover it up if you do. Um, so then I'm going to take my um, soft succulent for the base. Um, now I actually probably could use almost any one of these colours for the base because it's just a nominal colour if you like to get a base like a floor in there because I would use blue if I had it because that's kind of blue you know with ice and snow that kind of thing um and this wink of still is I did try it without doing the line it's not um really bright and bold enough on the paper even though it's it's really shimmery it's not bold enough on its own without a line you can't really see that and then it looks like the mouse is floating so um, we don't want a levitating mouse, so I'm just going to take my brush and I'm going to dip this in. Like I said, the more you kind of swirl it around, the more um, water comes out of the pen and the, 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 the weaker that mix becomes and the lighter the shade of green. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to put my... Um, I'm going to put... Let's have a look. I'll see if I can put him... Actually, no, yeah, I'm going to put him like this here. But do you know what? I'm not sure that's going to actually work on there. So I too, I'm going to freehand it again. So I'm going to come across here, so you can see this, and I'm just going to, I just want to make it a bit bumpy. See there, I've got a bit of ink on my finger from the thing, and I've now gone and inked the side of the card there. I'm terrible for doing that. Right, so I've got that, and I'm just going to pull across a bit more to make sure more water comes out of the pen and blends that down. And then as I pull it down more and more, the, the ink then fades into wet. But I don't want to over-wet it because it's not watercolour cardstock, it's just normal cardstock. And I don't want it to kind of um, pill where all the little bubbles come out or, or buckle or make it kind of wobbly, you know, bendy or anything because of the wet card. So I'll just give that a, just a second or two to dry. And then in the meantime, I'm going to get my lamp post. Now, I don't think it matters really. The lamp post does not have to be on the top of the surface. I'm actually going to put it down a bit. And the reason for that is... That it's in the snow effectively so it doesn't matter it kind of just finishes where it's kind of in the snow so i get my so this is not a stamping up block actually and i wish it was because they're so nice to hold they're really nice and curvy and chunky the proper um stamp up clear blocks um but anyway we're going to go with this and i'm going to ink do you know what i'm going to do quickly first get that piece of card just shove it under there to make sure i don't ink my own table Okay, and then I'm going to bring it down here, and, okay, it's really hot. Works. Okay, so yeah, he's just kind of going off the page then there, at the bottom. It's actually a little bit bendy, but anyway. So, he is on there, and then well, that's where I'm going to take my, 
cover up this black. I'm going to take a little bit of this colour and put him in for the that's a pale papaya. Uh, and put it in for the light, a bit more of a squeeze there. So you need to give it a good squeeze to be able to get some of the lead. And there, there's a bit there. Okay, so I'm just going to check my brush hasn't got the green on still, and we're okay. And I'm going to pull across that orange, and I'm going to get a bit of orange there. It's kind of like an orangey, melony colour. Well, papaya, I suppose, yeah. <laughs> there we go, like that. And I'm going to make sure that the, the base bit is does have a bit of colour onto it. And then I will just then fill in some of the other part with the more watered down colour there. So really it's just the middle. And you could actually draw a little candle flame or a bulb or something if they wanted to, but I think that's that's fine as it is. Um, then I'm going to take my polished pink and give that a bit of a squeeze there. There we go, we've got some in there already from before. And again, just use that as my palette, okay? And these colours, like I said, the lighting here is not great. This colour, that will meet it on the screen, looks almost like a, a bright red. It's not. It's a really, really, um, quite a, a magenta, almost pink. Not quite as bright as magenta, but it's uh, quite a bright pink. But I'm just going to colour his little scarf. Like I said, I'm just being qu quite careful, really, that I don't go over. You can manage to kind of go over the lines once or so, but once after that, if you carry on going over them, the, the ink will bleed. So... Just remember, if you're going to do watercolour, the best thing you can use is a solvent-based ink like black stays on or brown stays on, and that will actually uh, not bleed then. So, and then I'm going to colour this ribbon as well, uh, just on there, same colour. Um, we'll do his little hat and a little bit on the end of his nose. I'm doing all this standing up as well because I don't want you to see the back of my head if I bend forward, but well, you wouldn't want to see my hair at the moment, it's a right mess. Um, okay, so that is my um, pink done there. And actually, because I said earlier, didn't I, that I might have put his jacket, I'll run just colour his jacket. Um, so I'm going to get the dark, the evening evergreen, so it's a bit darker than the other um, soft succulent green. And I'm just going to just kind of quickly fill in his jacket there. Now, obviously, if you had a set of uh, the markers or the stamping blends, which are the alcohol based um, markers or anything, you could actually just put a tiny bit of green to just tie that into his jacket there as well. Um, you could quite easily, you know, use your markers and colour them properly. So you could have, you know, a nice brown or light brown or caramel coloured mouse or something like that on there. Um, but I think he'll do for now anyway. Like I said, the whole purpose is to be a clean and simple card. So then I'm going to take my Wink of Stella, just give him a little shake there. And I'm just going to go over the top. I'm going to pull that right down to the bottom there. Now, if I had daubers, which is the like little sponge finger daubers, or I had a blending sponge or a blending brush or something, what I would do is I would have made that um, curvature, the cutout one, and I would have used a brush, like a masking way of doing that um, floor to make it a bit more obvious like a proper a line on there really and blend it out which would have looked good but I don't have it so I'm just going with what I can do at the moment and uh, then lastly I've got a sentiment again it's the same one I used on the cards the other night it just says tis the season um, so I'm just going to pop tis the season and I think I'm just going to pop that in the middle there okay there we go. And then lastly, just so that we don't think he's snoring or yawning or what else could he be doing? I don't know, eating. <laughs> I'm going to put a couple of notes. I'll just put one there. I've got my double note there. I'll just put that's it. So now we know he's singing and he's not snoring or anything like that. And then, so because this is a clean and simple car, there's no gems on it, there's no ribbon on it, there's, there's, it's kind of plain. Um, there's a group um, called Clean and Simple Car. It's really, oh gosh, some of the stuff in there is absolutely stunning. Really is. Um, but uh, there's some really great designs and, and ideas in that as well. But um, 
for today. I think I don't often make clean and simple cards. I, I wouldn't turn them out clean and simple. They might be simple. <laughs> Maybe they're not clean. But um, I would... I like them. I love looking at them. I think they're really nice. Um, I just... I struggle, so I suppose, to feel like... I, I don't know. Sometimes you feel like you're not filling the space. I think that's the challenge of it, is that they might be called clean and simple, but they're not necessarily simple because you're doing a design that's got a lot of clean space on it. So what is on it needs to be really sort of good and quite structured as well in some way and planned out and maybe the planning out bit isn't my my strongest point but anyway so I'm going to pick this up and hope that it's kind of dried and hope I haven't got really inky fingers and I'm just using these stamping dimensionals I really love these I, I could have used um, a wet glue and just glued those layers down but because it's such a simple card as well it gives it a little bit of, of height um, and another dimension I suppose for it to be slightly raised off the base card now because i didn't actually mess it up but i could have done anyway if i did i would have then just done this panel again and like i said i wouldn't have wasted this base panel here um so anyway so that's the that's the meaning of clean and simple that's the meaning of um copy and share everything and kind of the reason why it's there um you know all the companies that that sell their stamps and dies and pattern papers and everything they're they're designing they want everybody to use it obviously, and they want everyone to share it and enjoy using it. There's no point in doing something if people feel, especially new crafters and people maybe that need the inspiration, if they feel that they're not almost like welcome to use things for fear of somebody saying, well, I did that design, you, you know, I don't want you copying what I've done. That's not how it's meant to go. So copy and share everything is a, just a really good ethos between everybody. Like I said, it's been in the Stamp Note catalogues for years, years back now, and they... they um, you know, lots of people on their blogs and things actually actively say that, and there's nothing wrong. That's the other thing as well is takes away that stigma. You know, it doesn't matter that you've copied somebody else's ideas or designs. There's nothing wrong with that. Um, you know, that's how we all, like I say, it's all how we all grow and learn and, and evolve our crafting style. And some people have very specific styles and other people, um, probably like myself, float about a bit between, you know, maybe a grungy look and maybe a clean and simple look and maybe a um, sort of fancy look. And some people you know, change up, but it, it's how we all learn and have fun as well. The main thing is it's a hobby and we're here to have fun, aren't we? And enjoy ourselves. So um, that's my card for this evening. That's the meanings of the things I said I was going to say. And that's just a very clean and simple, uh, for me anyway, um, card. Still got a little bit of sparkle on it. You can't have a Christmas card without any sparkle. But um, like I said, colour colour wise, it might not be the exact colours I would choose to do. But with the... With the um, the border there of that soft succulent tie into the ink that's been used and then the um evening evergreen which which blends well into that kind of color palette i actually really think it looks really nice um but yeah it's as i get more supplies i'll be able to do a little bit more but yeah i'm happy with that so there's my first clean and simple card and i cased my own card for for the, tonight's demo so anyway i want to say thank you very much for watching and thank you very much for um all the, the likes and the shares my posts and things like that really appreciate it because obviously as you know we're now down to what is it now about a week and two days what's that about nine days or something is it till it launches in ireland stamping up um and it's been a long time coming a really long time um and when i moved here obviously i'm not from here originally when i moved here i didn't know that um stamping up, um so i was asking and asking you know when's it going to be when's it going to be um are you going to be in ireland and they kept saying they didn't know they didn't know and then now then when, when i actually heard the news i had literally emailed them a few days before and said you know are you coming to ireland yet well, i'd really love to have stamping up in ireland and then i got an email back from saying a kind of standardized email just saying you know i'm sorry we don't know we'll let you know about any other um markets and stuff in due course and literally like the next day it was announced that we're launching in ireland i was so excited um, so yeah, I'm really, really happy to be able to buy all the things that I love from them. I can't wait to get the trimmer. I really miss the trimmer, um, which has a great scoring tool in it as well. Um, and there's a few other things that I really need to get my hands on tool wise, just so I can have enough things that I can, can create with. But anyway, for what I've got, um, for the little products that I've got at the moment, um, I feel that at least I've done a couple of different demos and, and like I said, nine days away, I'll try and get another live in as well before launch and then hopefully we'll all be um singing from the same song sheet <laughs> pun intended um when it comes to um product wise and then obviously anything that you see me use or anybody else use or, or anything online if you google so if you do that googling thing and uh, to find your own inspiration 
Uh, you know, of course, then if you do want the products from the ones you've seen or the ones that I've used, then obviously just get in touch. Um, and I would love to be a demonstrator. I'd love to be the person that you shop with. Um, and I will help in any way that I can when it comes to questions and things about the products um, or styles or meanings or anything like that anyway. So anyway, just ask me if you have anything that you want to know about. And like I said, I just want to say a really big thank you for watching and anyone else who then watches this after um, uh, the live when it's on replay. So thank you very much. I'm so glad my kids stayed asleep while I could do it. And I'll be back again, um, maybe in a daytime one. So just so you know as well about me, I work in a hotel, which means I work, uh, it could be mornings, evenings, afternoons, Saturdays, Sundays, bank holiday Mondays or anything in between. So I, and it's all on shift, like a different rotor every week. So actually I never have a um, a set rotor. So I, that's why I do videos sometimes, all at different stages. And it does mean that if you're, um, you know, a nine to five work, you'll catch me in the evenings. And if you're, um, you're not, then you'll catch me in the daytime. So at least there's something for, for everybody there and they're always available on replay. And I have added on my um, YouTube channel, um, I set up the channel so that I could put all these videos in to there so that people that like to watch it on YouTube can do it there if they don't like doing it through um, Facebook. So it'll take me a short while just to get this downloaded and re-uploaded onto Facebook, but it will be there by tomorrow um, if you want to watch this on there as well. So thank you very much and I'll see you later. Bye-bye.